YouTube, Larry. My name is Wild Boy Five Six Nine, and welcome to my official second Q and A of 2024 or something. But instead of talking about personal interests and stuff like that, well, this kind of personal interest. Uh, a couple days ago, I made a video announcing that I wanted to do a anime theme Q and A, and I let it go for a couple of days. Today is the eighth, and you're probably going to see this on the ninth or tenth. It just depends on what time, day, and time, and then stuff like that. But I decided to go ahead and post an anime theme Q and A. Uh, I have got several questions, and I lo lowered it down to the basically the ones that piqued my interest or the ones that was asked the most. Uh, like I said, this is anime anime theme. We're talking about my, we're gonna be talking about favorite anime, least favorite anime, anime voice actors, conventions, and stuff like that. Keep in mind that any anime I talk about, whether I love or hate it, it is just my personal opinion. Um, nothing against it or anything whatsoever. There may be some animes that I may praise, or there may be some animes that I may hate. But it's all in all, at the end of the day, this is just my personal opinion. So if you have any animes that if you have any animes that I like, you hate, or I hate, or you like, let me know in the in the comments below. Anyway, let's get started with this anime Q and A. Since you love Rius Grimmery so much, what is your all time favorite Rius moment? So I kind of thought about this one for a while when I watched High School DxD for a couple a couple a uh, couple times, and I finally decided which one my favorite Rius Grimmery moment it is. It's actually the second to last episode of season one where they're playing the very first uh, rating games. And Issei is fighting the guy that Rius is going to marry if the guy wins. Basically, a couple episodes ago, a couple episodes prior to that, Rius, uh, the guy, I can't remember his name, like, right, Five and Fox or something like that. Uh, he was supposed, he wanted to marry Rius, and uh, I guess the way, the thing was that if he won the rating games that that year, he would be marrying Rius. And Rias was it against it, but he uh, Issei fought Rias, and the guy was being the shit out of him, and Issei was on the verge of death, and Rias is screaming at the top of her legs, begging him not to kill him and all that, even though the rating game said you were not allowed to kill anybody, but it was just a free-for-all now. And so Rias Grimory uh, sacrifices her winning victory to the game, uh, resigns it, to, and just to get to lose and to marry this guy just to save Eos's life. And I said, if that's not dedication for anybody, then I don't know what it is. But that is my all-time favorite Rias Grimmery moment. What is your favorite High School DxD episode? My favorite High School DxD pro ep favorite ep my favorite my favorite High School DxD episode is probably any uh, a couple of quite a different ones from season one. I definitely love season one the most, but I think my favorite High School DxD episode is probably either season one or uh, season one. Favorite High School DxD episode is probably episode one or two, or the one I just talked about in the last question where Rias uh, begs to not, where she sacrifices the, her victory of the rating games just to save Issei to marry that guy. Probably any episode in season one is probably my favorite episode so far. Who are some of your favorite anime voice actors and actresses? So I'm probably going to get a lot of shit for this, but probably my favorite anime voice actor of all time is probably Jamie Markey. I mean, I, I, I think she's a very talented woman. I know she gets a lot of shit on Twitter, and people like to shit on her a lot, whether it be YouTube or Twitter or stuff like that. But personally, I think she's a very talented woman. Uh, I definitely love her and everything she's in, whether it be from uh, uh, High School DxD, Hero Academia, Panty and Stalking, Burst Angel, and stuff like that. Because uh, I know I have, you know, I've talked to Jamie many. I've not met Jamie Markey in person, uh, but I've talked to her many times on Twitter. I've sent her a couple of tweets. Uh, she has she has liked a couple of my tweets. She loved my Rias Grimmery tattoo when I tweeted to her. So hopefully one of these days that I'll be able to meet Jamie Markey. Um, hopefully she's going to be at a convention in her hometown of Oklahoma City in December, which hopefully I plan on going, plan on going. I know I said in the video when I talked about Anime 405, I will be going. I'm, that's, that's the plan, but the thing is I got to get a job first before I do that. I am friends with a guy, like I talked many times to, uh, who does conventions out in Oklahoma, Arkansas, the big Comic Con in Little Rock, Northwest Arkansas Comic Con. I asked him, hey, just a shot in the dark, maybe for next year's Northwest Arkansas Comic Con. Uh, do you think you can bring Jamie Marquis and Monica Real? He's like, I'll definitely take a look at them. I don't do the booking, but he he said he'll boost this along. So, but anyway, hopefully. But the plan is to when I get a job and get some money up and going, uh, I will go to Anime Four or Five in December. Only way I'm not gonna, only way I'm gonna can't go to that if it's the fucking end of the world. But that's the plan. Anyway, I'm a huge fan of Jamie Marquis's work. I love Monica Real, whether she plays Joe in Burst Angel, uh, Stocking Penny, Stocking Sue in uh, My Hero Academia, and everything. Uh, voice actor wise, um. I'm a really fan of Justin Briner, who plays Deku in My Hero Academia. I've, I'm a fan of Eric Vell. Uh, the first anime I ever watched him in was um, uh, Heaven's Lost Property. Uh, I was at the very first convention I was at had J. Michael Tatum, uh, Eric Vell, and Brandon McKinnon, who all played in My Hero Academia. I, uh, of course, I didn't know anime at the time. The only reason I went was to meet Charles Martinet, Billy West, and John Heater. Uh, 
But of course, when I fit, when knowing that I was in the same room as Ida from My Year Academia, I was in the same room as Derek Vale, who has been a Funimation from, for years and all that. Um, I it, it's just really I don't I remember having a little interaction with Eric Vale outside the convention. I actually bumped into him. I said, "Oh, I'm sorry, man." He's like, "No, you're good, buddy." Patted me on the back and walked away. I didn't even know who he was until I saw him. I'm like, "Oh, that's so and so." I'm like, "Damn." He patted me on the back and called me buddy. I'm like, how about that? So, but yeah, those are probably some of my favorite uh, anime voice actors and voice actresses. Who are your favorite and least favorite characters from Honey Pop 1 and 2? My favorite char Honey Pop characters from 1 is without a doubt a tie between Kiana and, Aud and Audrey. Kiana and Tiffany, and my least favorite Honey Pop character is Nikki, which that's probably going to get a lot of shit. I know people really, really love Nikki. I know Markiplier loved Nikki from Honey Pop. I know Jack Septicai loved Nikki from Honey Pop 1. They didn't like Tiffany for whatever reason, which I don't know why, but my favorite, uh, favorite Honey Pop player is a tie between Kiana and Tiffany. I'm leaning on towards Kiana more because I have a thing for Latina Mexican chicks and Hispan uh, and uh, all that. Uh, my least favorite character is Nikki. I don't like the shy or nerdy girls, which makes no sense because when Jack Septic and Markiplier played Honey Pop, they were they liked Nikki the best uh, from um, they like Nikki the shy nerdy girl, and they don't like the party girl Audrey. But when they played the game Emily's Away, uh, they went with the party girl and didn't like the shy simple video game girl, which makes no really sense. But anyway, I like uh, Kiana and T Tiffany the most. Least favorite character is Nikki. Honey Pop 2, my favorite character was without a doubt Lilani, the Pacific, the Polynesian girl. I have a thing for Polynesian chicks. I pretty much have a different, have a thing for for girls that are a different race, whether it be Polynesian, Japanese, and stuff like that. Least favorite character in Honey Pop 2 is uh, Lilian. Can't stand that bitch. Uh, but yeah, those are my favorite characters from Honey Pop 1 and 2. If you could, would you go to Miko Expo 2025? In a fucking heartbeat. I was going to go to Miko Expo uh, this year in Dallas. Because Dallas is about four and a half hours away from where I live. And, of course, people like to... Uh, it was sponsored by Crunchyroll this year, and apparently it had a lot of negative feedback this year because mostly from past Miku Expo, uh, uh, in the past, Miku was a hologram that would run around the stage. And apparently uh, Miku Expo, Miku performing this year was just on a big TV screen, which a lot of people were not were pissed about. But not only pissed about that, but for the outrageous prices that were spon because Crunchyroll sponsored the North American tour, and apparently people weren't happy for the prices, and weren't happy about for, for watching the TV. They did have the live band as always. I will give a props to having a live band doing that. But I looked at tickets for every fucking venue that Mi uh, Miku was gonna be that was was gonna be at. I checked the one in Dallas. Uh, Pit tickets were sold out, and back tickets, balcony tickets were $175. Now, I don't know if that was resale tickets from scalpers or if that was the actual price. Because I know sometimes when you, uh, when I try to buy tickets, I try to buy tickets the day they go on sale. I have I usually get lucky because when I go to concerts, I prefer concerts in smaller venues than big concert than big arenas. To be honest, that's just how I am. And I've gotten lucky to buy regular re regular tickets because I know sometimes they get sold out and everything, and then people will like to scalp and and want to pay want to use and sell them for outrageous prices, which is fucking ridiculous. People who do that are the worst human. Uh, two people are the worst human being: scalpers and people who like to go on restaurants five minutes before they close. But yeah, I would go to Miku Expo in a fucking heartbeat. So hopefully in twenty twenty five, if I get a license, good job and everything, I would go to Miku Expo twenty five. And if I do, I will go to Dallas and I will do a video on it. How did you get into Doki Doki Literature Club? I think I talked about this one in the past when I did videos on uh, DDLC's uh, anniversary video, like the 5th anniversary review. So I did not know what DDLC was until, well, I've heard about it. I saw bits and pieces of videos uh, when it was popular, very popular, like uh, in a 2017, 2000, beginning of 2018, I was a uh, first man in college. The game came out right after I got out of high school. I think it came out in September 2017, which... um. Was I was in my second month of college. Um, apparently, I know. Apparently, it blew up back in Nove November, December that that year when Markiplier, PewDiePie, and Jack Step got played it. And of course, I was just I'm like, this game is weird. And then I saw in the back of my mind that it said it was a stealth, a psychological horror game. And I said, there is no fucking way. This is a joke. And then I got bored one day. I didn't have no money. It was during COVID. I said, I want to play a game. I want to do videos, but I have no money. And I got a piece of shit laptop, and I want to play games. I'll do Let's Play, and I didn't know what to do. So I looked up free, popular uh, theme games, and DDLC was one of the first ones that popped up. And it said, Psychological Horror Game, Visual Novel, and it said free. 
I said, is this the game that people said that this guy is a horror game? So I went on the Discord server that I was on. I said, hey, anybody ever play DDLC? If so, what do I expect? And they said, and most everybody said, go play that game right now. I'm not telling you anything. Go play that game. I'm not going to say anything. Go play the game. When you're done, come back and we'll talk about it. And I said, okay. I did three videos on it back in 2020, which they have been deleted. Uh, I have played the game all the way through uh, off camera. Game so I'm, and then I fell in love with the game. Uh, the game is to me the game is a lot more depressing than scary because there's a lot of, the game there's a lot of mental health stuff, suicide, depression, stuff like that. And then the very end where you delete Monica is just too bearable, uh, which is funny because I didn't cry um, when Mon when you delete Monica and she plays the song and leaves a goodbye note. But I did cry on the good ending where Sierra was like, "Hey, thanks for playing. Come back and see us. We always love you." And then when I read Dance of Autos later, I absolutely lost it. And then uh, the game stuck with me all this, uh, all this time, all the whole, all this time. I have my DDLC hat somewhere. Uh, I usually wear this Monica hat when I cut my hair. Um, when I usually cut my hair with it like that. But it, most of the time, I usually wear my uh, the Doki Doki Electric Club hat when it has all the characters on that. It needs to be washed. I've had it for four fucking years. I took it many of many of places. I usually wear my DDLC shirts in public when I worked at the mall at shoe department. I would wear a blue shirt. My blue uh, button-up shirt, and I would able you were able to wear graphic tees at the time, but for the last two two months that you weren't able to, but I would wear graphic tees over my blue shirt, and it was very very cool. But the, the game stuck with me for for all these years, and I had the hat, and I go everywhere. I saw I took that DDLC hat with me to many conventions, to many concerts. I took it to Steel Panther twice. I took it to uh, uh, Buck, <coughs> I took it to Buck Cherry twice. I took it to Nickelback. I even pretended to do my hat around to the side to where I could have, like, Natsuki and Chad Kruger in the, the same vision as me. And it's funny because I remember when I saw Steel Panther. Because you saw the the video, the picture I saw of me and Steel Panther. I had my DDLC hat on my rear screen where she was. And uh, when, you, when you saw the video, the Steel Panther video on in the when in the Fayetteville video, you can see statues like, we're going to do that intro again. He points to me and he says, you're going to bang your head so hard that fucking hat's going to fly out. That is the closest you're going to get to DDLC Steel Panther lore. He didn't say anything about the anime. He didn't say anime or anything. He said the hat, but the hat he was talking about was my DDLC hat. <laughs> it cracks me the fuck up. But it, it just, the going back and watching it, cracks me the fuck up. But yeah, DDLC will always have a special place in my heart. My favorite animes are Yu Yu Hakusho and Rano Kinshin. Do you have and suggest that similar to those? I unfortunately have not seen those animes yet, but since you have recommended them, I will take a look at them later tonight after I get done recording, and when I get done, I will post a video and then get back to you of my thoughts on both of those animes and see what is similar to those. Have you heard of Food Wars? If not, I recommend it. It's on for five seasons. What is your favorite anime villain? I've actually heard of Food Wars. I just haven't had time to watch it yet, but I do know it has a bunch of anime voice actors I know because I know Jade Saxon's on it. I know the person who plays Achako from My Hero Academia is in it. I know Brittany Kowalski is in it, so I will have to take it out. It looks very, very cool from the manga pictures and anime pictures and all that. And my favorite anime villain of all time, uh, that's a tough one. Probably... I have no idea. Oh, man, that's a fucking tough question. I really couldn't tell you. I have watched... So many animes, and I really can't tell you which one my favorite anime villain is. It's a tough one. There are so many ones that are so good. Oh, man. Um, Six hours later. I would guess my favorite anime villain is probably the bad guys from season three of My Hero Academia. The one that fought, all the ones that fought All Might to where he has to get back into his normal uh, form. That he can't get into his big badass form anymore. So probably those animes, animes probably those villains from uh, season three of My Hero Academia. When did you start watching anime? So believe it or not, when I was in high school, I actually despised anime. I absolutely couldn't stand it, and I couldn't know, and I didn't know why people loved it so fucking much. But during COVID, I got bored, and I finally took the time to watch some anime. Because my a friend on Discord, I've been friends with a couple years on Discord, sent me a gif, a uh, gif of Riz Grimmery, and I said, "Who is this beautiful angel?" He goes, "That is a devil named Riz Grimmery from High School DXD," and he sends me a buttload of naked pictures of her from the show. I said, oh, I just gotta have to see just what this is all about. And I saw a couple of clips and I'm like, oh, this is really, really good. And so I bought the first season, two seasons, uh, first three seasons of High School DXC on the DVD. Uh, got them, watched them in early 2023, and I fell in love when I branched out to other animes. So, um, branched out to animes. The second anime I watched after that was Witchblade, and then Burst Angel, and then Panty and Stalking, and then just very out there. Right now, 
the anime I'm watching right now, trying to get a catch up on, was My Hero Academia. But I didn't start watching anime until during the COVID pandemic, or at least 2022-2023. I'm a little late to the game, but I finally can appreciate anime and look back and laugh like uh, that dumbass kid of high school I was in. What is your least favorite anime? Again, since I like to hate on stuff that people really like and like the stuff that people like to really hate on, I would probably, this is probably going to get me a lot of shit. Uh, but I don't have a least favorite anime. I will say the ones, the one I really could not get into for whatever reason was Sailor Moon. I tried watching Sailor Moon a couple of three or four episodes in. Not because it's really old or anything, but I could not. I was a little bit disturbed by the fact uh, 14, 13, 14 year old girls dressing up in little clothing. It bothered the hell out of me. Maybe if I watched Sailor Moon when I was that age of the characters they're on now, maybe I would love to appreciate it these years later. I can understand that it's a fine anime. I know it's one of the most popular animes of all time right there with their Pokemon. And I know it's popular for people that know many people I know absolutely love it. And I don't hate Sailor Moon and I don't hate any, uh, any of the... <clears throat> Any of the animes I ever watched, but the ones that would make me uncomfortable for the most part was probably Sailor Moon. It is a fine anime, and I can understand why people love it so much, but something about 13-year-old girls in little tight clothing like that bothers the hell out of me. After Riaz, who is your favorite anime character, and what is your favorite anime movie? My favorite anime movie, without a doubt, has for the la ever since I knew what anime was, was he, uh, Miyazaki Spirit of the Light. I... Didn't like, I just can't understand why Cartoon Network played the shit out of it when I was a kid, like 2004, 2005, 2006. And then when I was a sophomore in high school, my English teacher made us watch it for a t for the end of semester test. And then I fell in love with that. That was the only anime thing I knew up until I was like 22, 23 years old. And I've grown to appreciate a anime, but uh, Spirit of the Way has always been my favorite anime. Ponyo is up there in second place. I really love Ponyo. I know that's another Miyazaki classic. I know that's a, that movie is not as old as Spirit of the Way, but I remember when Ponyo came to America, came out in America for the first time because I know it had the Miley Cyrus' the sister, Jonah brother's sister, Jonah's brother's sister, it had Tina Fey, Matt Damon, Betty White, um, Liam Neeson, A-list celebrity names. And I know with uh, Spirit of the Way, I know it had the uh, Jason Marsden, who played Max in the Goofy movie, was in the English version. Uh, the girl who played Lilo and Lilo and Stitch and the girl from The Ring. Uh, yes, that's the same person. But uh, they had, usually when they had Miyazaki movies in English dub, um, Studio Ghibli's or whatever in the America, especially with Ponyo, they always had big A celebrities, which surprised me because I know Ponyo had uh, uh, Noah Cyrus, Frankie Jonas, Tina Fey, uh, Liam Mason, Dave, Matt Damon, even fucking Betty White was in the damn thing. Uh, but yeah, those are probably my favorite anime movie, at least my favorite anime movies, and my favorite char anime character after Rias, probably another Jamie Markey character, uh, Masane from Witchblade. I love that character. I love the relationship of Bonshi he has with her daughter in the show, even though that's not her real daughter. If you watch the and I spoil it, but I de it kills me because I watched the ending of Witchblade, and it kills me how the show fucking ended. I hate how they how she ended up dying. But apparently, Witchblade was an uh, American adaptation, which was an anime. Um, not an original, uh, it was not original work, but it was, it was an anime, but I appreciate, I loved, I love Jamie Marky Harris and Masami, and I know that's one of her favorite characters as well. Uh, I love the bond she has with her daughter, like I said, even though that's not the, her real daughter, and it breaks my heart the way how the show ended, and it breaks my heart. Um, another character that I really like, I really love Midnight in My Hero Academia. I know people, a lot of things, I'm odd. Because people like to call her pervert, a pervert teacher and everything, but I really love the character and all that, and all that in Midnight. I'm absolutely pissed. Not because that she ended up getting killed in season six, but I'm also pissed because some fuckwad spoiled her death for me. So I'm not there at season six yet, but when I know when season six happens, I gotta get myself ready for it, and it sucks. But those are probably my character, my favorite character of the Rias, uh, Masami, uh, Moonblade, and Midnight of My Hero Academia. What was the first anime you ever watched, and why did you get a Rios Grimory tattoo? So I talked about a couple of these two experiences, uh, two two topics in the past. The first anime I ever watched, or if you watched this video earlier, or if you watched a video earlier ago, I thought said the first anime I ever watched was High School DxD. It was the first anime I ever watched, and I felt that's the reason I fell in love with anime. That's the reason I got the Rios Grimory tattoo. Like the question said, uh, like I said, I wanted a tattoo for a very long time, but I had no idea of what I wanted to get. 
I thought about getting an autism piece symbol. I thought about getting a music symbol. I thought about getting a quote from a movie. And then one day, my me, my dad and brother and mom were in the car. We were talking about my brother getting a tattoo. And my brother propped up saying he wanted to get a tattoo of SpongeBob. And I said, I finally know what tattoo I want. And then lot, nobody has ever judged me with the tattoo I've got. So I decided to get a tattoo of Rhea's from my school DXD. I went to Southtown Pond in Fort Smith. Uh, booked it two weeks out. Tattoo artist is a fuck, was a fucking dickhead. Um, so I won't go back there. Um, but yeah, that's the reason I got the, the anime, the Rhea's Grimmery tattoo is the reason for the question is because that was High School DXD was the first anime I ever watched and I fell in love with Rhea's and her character and all that. Least favorite character in High School DXD and favorite and least favorite character in My Hero Academia. I don't have a favorite, uh, I don't have a least favorite character in High, in high School DXD. I will say that the one, well, I, yeah, well, I don't hate any of the characters in High School DXD. The one I kind of do not stand is um, probably Gasper. I know a lot of people, I know nothing against him being a cross-dresser or anything like that. I just find him very, very annoying. But the person who plays Gasper is a very talented woman, even though she don't act, and even though she don't voice an anime, she doesn't do anime roles anymore due to COVID and working at home and the protesters and everything that happened in 2020 and 20 and 2020 and 2021 but i think but like i said the one i probably my least favorite character in high school dxd i don't hate him but i just find him very annoying not because of cross-dressing but he's just a very annoying little piece of shit um i know a lot of people don't like ozia i don't mind ozia as well uh, but we all know if i figure high school dxd character was Rias and then after it was Akino and from there it just spreads out of everybody um but my favorite character in uh, my hero academia it was Mount Lady at first, and people were like, "What is with you with these Jamie and Archie characters?" But I didn't know she was. I didn't know. I I saw Mount Lady pictures. I'm like, "Oh, she's all. She looks hot." And then when I saw when I found out who that was, I said, "That's Jamie and Archie." Uh, but I did like Mount Lady of uh, that Mount Lady first. But I she's not a very uh, uh, recurring character on the show. But I did. I saw Midnight, and then I fell in love with Midnight. And like I said, I love Midnight. It's my favorite character in my hair academia. I do like Deku. I do like uh, Mino Asadosha. I like me uh, Pinky. I do like um, a lot of the Class 1A characters. However, I do not like that little shithead. Don't know his name. Minimo, the one who has the um, balls against his head. He was such a little shithead pervert, which uh, I know a lot of people don't like him. He's, annoying, he's a little shithead. Uh, I really can't stand uh, Bakugo because he's the fucking asshole and I would kick the living shit out of him even though he'd probably kill me. But I do see, I ha I did saw in season 6 that uh, he does apologize to De uh, to Deku for being a pe uh, for bullying him and everything and he, they have a heartfelt moment and all that. Uh, so maybe after watching that, but he's just, not only he's an asshole to Deku, but he's an asshole to every fucking body and he was a sore winner when he won against the, uh, uh, in the, the games in season two. Um, but yeah, he, those are some of my favorite characters. Like I said, I can't stand that little shit minima and I can't stand back ago, but knowing that his character, uh, uh, develops throughout the show, maybe I'll get, learn to like him more once I get to season six. Is there any anime voice actor you want to meet? So like I said earlier in the video, it has been on my bucket list to meet Jamie Markey. I've been wanting to meet her for years. I almost had the opportunity because, uh, in 2021, Northwest Arkansas had their had their very first Comic Con, uh, Northwest Arkansas Comic Con, and it had Jim Cummings, uh, Jamie C James the Marcy, and Jamie Markey and Monica Rial were there. Of course, I didn't know who Monica Rial was uh, was at the time, and then I saw Jamie Markey was going to be there. I'm like, oh, I'm going. When is it? And it was during fucking tax free weekend in Arkansas. Couldn't get off because it was tax free weekend. I worked at the mall, and the boss was like, don't even attempt to call it because if you do. You're not going to have a job no more. I'm like, son of a bitch. And then she was, and then Jimmy Markey and Monica Rina were announced for the Little Rock Anime Festival in February 2022, which was a couple months after Northwest Arkansas Comic Con for the very first time. This was just a one day event. Uh, Monica Rina was there, but a couple of weeks before the uh, the, um, the the convention, uh, I guess Jimmy Markey got uh, contacted with COVID and she wasn't able to come. I'm like, shit. But hopefully, my friends with from Pop Culture Culture VXV uh, events will bring Jimmy Markey to a convention where there'll be Northwest Arkansas Little Rock Anime Festival or Comic Con. But my plan is to get a job, buy a ticket to Anime 405, and me, Jamie Markey, Monica Rial, Elizabeth Maxwell, uh, Christopher Sabat, um, anybody other character. But if I go to Anime 405, I need a shit ton of money. The goal, the main reason to go is to go meet Jamie Markey. Like I said, I've talked to her many times on Twitter, and she has been very, very nice to me. 
Uh, we've had a good couple of couple. She has liked a bunch of tweets I've tweeted to her. She loves to read tattoo. So hopefully, when I meet her in person one day, because that's the plan. I'm going to meet her one day, and if I'm able to go to Anime 405 in December, Oklahoma City, that is the first place I'm going to. And then of course I want to meet Monica Rial. I want to meet Elizabeth Maxwell. I know all. It's basically going to be a fucking My Hero Academia reunion, Anime 405. So we will see. But that is the plan. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes the anime Q&A video. There was a lot of questions, mostly from the same people, but I really don't mind it too much. I love doing these Q&A videos. It gets, to know, you get, it gets a way to get to know me better, know about my interests and stuff like that. I absolutely had fun making this, reading everybody's questions, and everybody liked it. If I, not, if I did not get to your question, I do apologize. And if I did like an anime that you like, or if I don't like an anime that you like, or if I like an anime you don't like, that's totally fine. Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, I will definitely check out the animes that everybody's recommended, whether it be Food Wars and stuff like that. Uh, but hopefully this gets an insight. I know I need to branch out to anime, to more animes, but the ones I've been watching are from Funimation. And I know a lot of Funimation animes are the same voice actors and everybody. But that is the plan to branch out to other animes and talk about more animes. I do have a video I've been working on for about a couple of weeks now. It is called, it's kind of like a nostalgia critic tight video where I wrote a script very first video I wrote a script for I have the I have the recordings ready to go I have the video like this ready to go the only thing that's pushing me back is the editing because that's a lot of editing to do and it's kind of hard to do it on movie maker but hopefully within the next couple of weeks I will get that video up and going it's called it's going to be called wild boy reviews episode one top 10 favorite animes and it's like I said it's going to be a type of nostalgia critic review and your video game review where you show clips and everything it has a smart ass character and everything but that is the plan and try to get it out in a couple of weeks i have i wrote the script down i done the i done the audio recording i've done the video recording i just gotta get to find the right clips and i got to find the right sound effects and i gotta find and i have to have to find the time to edit so hopefully i'll get that out by the end of the month but i am trying my damnedest and that's what's holding me back but until then hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did rave it a thumbs up comment down below check out my social media down below as always thank you guys a lot for watching i'll see you on my future video Take it easy.